When Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns was first announced as having duels taking place inside virtual reality, the immediate reaction from myself and many others in the community was that Yu-Gi-Oh! had finally entered Sword Art Online's territory. But how true really is that statement? Today I'll discuss some of the major similarities between the two shows, as well as speculate on how Reigns can go beyond what we know and become the new Sword Art Online, for better or worse. Both shows heavily involve the use of virtual reality systems to advance the plot. In Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns, the VR system Link Reigns will be the main location that duels take place in, as well as where the majority of the show's threats will stem from. In Sword Art Online, the Nerf Key headset was used to trap players inside the SAO game, forcing them to beat the game or die, whichever one happened first, in order to escape. However, in this case, if you died in the game, you died in real life as well. Both shows incorporate the concept of knights. In Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns, the Knights of Hanoi are an elitist group of hackers who are trying to destroy the Cyburst world through the Link Reigns system. Not much is known about the Knights of Hanoi, other than that they are shrouded in white cloaks and the leader is named Revolver, who we are currently assuming to be the main villain for the first arc of the show. In Sword Art Online, the Knights of the Blood Oath are a guild of highly skilled players of the game, led by Heathcliff. The main heroine, Asuna Yuki, is a member of this group, however does not realise at the very end that behind the Knights of the Blood Oath was the main antagonist of the show, Kayaba Akihiko, who actually created Sword Art Online and the Nerve Gear system. Kazuto Kiligaya, who goes by the screen name Kirito Online, is described as a cool-headed, calm and collected character, who rarely shows any signs of distress. In SAO, Kirito almost never falters, with a sometimes cocky amount of confidence about him. Sound familiar? This almost identically matches some of the first information we ever got about Yusaka Fujiki, a normal high school student who is cool-headed and extremely clever. As well, he's good at reading people and thinks fast on his feet, a description that could also fit Kirito quite accurately given his impressive grasp on the game and how he deals with life or death situations, such as combating some of the toughest bosses in the game. We know Yusaku has faced the Knights of Hanoi before in the past, but in what form? How did those events initially come to be? How long ago did this happen? Well, that's for the show to answer. However, we can draw a nice parallel with some of the major events from Sword Online 2, where Kirito had to face a ghost from his Ironcrowd past inside Gun Gale Online, a different type of VR MMO game, more prominently featuring guns as weapons rather than the classic weaponry he had been accustomed to, a member of one of the most elite murder squads of Ironcrad, the Laughing Coffin. This also draws another parallel to Reigns, where a new entity is born thanks to the world they're in. The Laughing Coffin were born from the world of SAO and its restrictions, and the Knights of Hanoi, who are probably more comparable to the Laughing Coffin than the Knights of the Blood Oath, were born from the Link Reign system. When these events come about, Kirito is around 16 to 17 years old in Sword Art Online, the same age Yusaku Fujiki is when we start Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns. If those events for the past for Yusaku happened one to two years ago, then we could potentially see another huge comparison Though that's me being speculative for now. One of SAO's main draws is its lineup of female characters, but the female lead and fan favourite Asuna Yuki is who we'll be focusing on today. She and Aoi Zaisen both share one very major thing in common. In their respective VR worlds, they're both looked upon highly and are very popular people. For Asuna, she is the sub leader of the Knights of the Blood Oath and is considered to be one of the strongest and best players of the game. Aoi Zaisen is idolised for being a charisma duelist, a person who has a strong sense of entertainment in their duel. Her magical girl inspired outfit lends to her popularity, as does Asuna Yuki's. Both characters seem very open in advising people on first appearances, though first appearances are not all as they seem to be. Okay, now I'm going to speculate a little bit here regarding Aoi Zaisen's character outside of the Link Reigns world. Recently we were graced with a tease of Aoi Zaisen's animation outlined by renowned Arc 5 animator No Kill Bo, thanks to an image he shared on Twitter. In this image we see such a huge disparity between the real Aoi and the virtual Blue Angel character, just from the look on her face and her body language and how she's holding the card. They seem like entirely different people. The real Aoi seems upset and depressed, whereas the other smiley and happy. It's as though she's putting on a front in her VR form, or that she's using the VR doors as a method of escapism from the real world and her situation in it. Which could be that she is from a rich family, or one that has had a very strict upbringing in the past. Her family member, Akira Zaisen, definitely gives off this feel, at least to me. Though we don't know just who he is in relation to her. Is he her brother or father? She may be pressured by her family members, which is why she appears to look so upset and depressed. This, if this is the direction the show decides to take, will be another glaring comparison to Asuna Yuki's real world life situation, as shown in Sword Online 2. She comes from a family with a rich upbringing who expects certain things and values of her that do not align with how she wants to live her life or spend her time, enjoying herself in the VR world. Many decisions are made for her, such as who she was to marry, which if a similar thing happened to Aoi and Reigns, would make me appreciate the show much more, although it wouldn't have to be that specific example if it was. However, there are some things we still don't know about Reigns at all, like how the VR will work. Will Yusaku be wearing a headset like Kirito did in Sword Art Online, and like we do in the real world with the current technology available now? Or will this be a super advanced form of VR we haven't thought of yet? 
Why is the Link Brain system just a copy of the real world and not a stylized and ideal world like Aincrad or Alfheim? And of course there are many more questions other than those. Well, that's enough of me for today. Let me know in the comments section down below what you thought of this type of video. Do you want to see more discussions like this in the future? And of course, let me know what you think Rage will be like and any other shows you see parallels with in the comment section down below. I can't wait to talk with you guys in the comment section and I hope you enjoy this video. See you next time.